What a time to be a Tottenham Hotspur fan. It is all happening. Welcome back to the Spurs Chat Podcast, where I've got three very special guests to go through all of the last week's news and, of course, talk about Tottenham Hotspur as activity in the transfer window. Now, let's introduce the very special guests. First of all, we have got Ricky Champagne Norwood back with us. Ricky, how are you? How you doing, brother? I am buzzing, mate. I am buzzing. What? What team is this? What club is this? Is, I, am I dreaming? Is this FIFA? Is this is virtual reality? I don't know what's going on right now, but I am loving it, bro. Loving it. The, the smile just say it all. And we have got Richard Whitehead, MBE, back with us. Rich, how are you doing? Yeah, really good. You can tell the two people that are really struggling in life, especially with electricity, the two people with the brightest shirts on tonight. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I'm absolutely buzzing. Looking forward to tonight, as always. Come on, you Spurs. And we've also got Brian Moore back with us. It's been a while, Brian, Brian but you're all the way from uh, Los Angeles. Spurs, how are you? Doing great. Doing great, guys. Doing great, Chris. Really uh, looking forward to the season. Just like like every other guy said, just buzzing from the news this week. Just the can't smi- believe it. The smiles, the smiles yeah. just say it all. They really do. Um Ricky, let's start with you. Now, four confirmed signings. It is the 1st of July, by the way. Four confirmed signings. Eve Basuma, Ivan Perisic, Fraser Forster, and of course, this morning, Richarlison. Before we talk about Richarlison, I just want to know how you're feeling right now as a Spurs fan. Mate, uh, my mind's blown. Honestly, my mind's blown. I love the fact that they are back in their chat with action right now. Right now. I love that Conte, like I've said all throughout last season, is holding that ball to account. I love that Don Paratici is going out there and cooking up a storm. And I'm <laughs> glad that we are, we, we are getting everybody that is on our list right now. You know all the rumours that we got before the end of the season that we're after six players, we're after these positions. We've heard this many and many a time. We've gone for players many, many a time out of an opportunity. Do you know what I mean? Oh, we can pick up that one. Oh, we'll fit him in there. Oh, we Right now, we've got a plan, we've got direction, we've got a world-class manager, we've got a world-class director of football, and the club is cooking, bro. So I am over the moon right now. I can't believe this is Tottenham Hotspur. And I don't care what anybody else says from any other club. Right now, you're allowed to be happy, Tottenham. Tottenham fans, you're allowed to be happy. Celebrate it, put it up there, (laughs) load it. Do you know what I mean? Get some fireworks out. Don't you worry, because we've never had a transfer window like this, and I am loving it. Long may this continue. Well, if people aren't happy at the moment, Rick, there is 62 days left of the transfer window. So, you know, we'll we have another 37 <laughs> signings in by then. Rich, <laughs> come on. Rich, let's come to you. How are you feeling? Oh, my oh, goodness. Every day, every day there's something on. Isn't it? It's like amazing. You go on to social media and everybody's chatting how positive the talk about Spurs is. And like you said, it's only June. Unbelievable. And I think we're going to have more signings in, getting in those positions that we need. And I think Spurs fans are going to be very surprised in how we do next season. And this is me being positive. <laughs> it's brilliant, Rich. I tell you, I speak to so many Spurs fans and, and, and of course, half of them I know are very positive all the time and always see the positives in anything, uh, like Ricky. Um, and then, of course, <laughs> we've got the other, the other half who, who I'm not really hearing from at the moment because they've got nothing to moan about, which is absolutely fantastic. Not mentioning any names, of course. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Um, yeah, Brian, let's come to you. How are you feeling right now? Oh... It reminds me a little bit, I was saying to some of the group here yesterday, it reminds me a little bit of the Magnificent Seven that we signed back in in 2013. If you remember that, you know, Ericsson and Lamella turned out to be the only decent ones out of a lot of them. But uh, that didn't, I don't think that happened at the beginning of the term, um, beginning of the uh, window, did it? So it's just, um, you know, happy days. What can you say, really? If we get another few more, if we get Spence in and um, a few more in, it's going to be great. It's just it's unreal at the moment, isn't it? You're on a high, just a, a brilliant summer so far. Right, let, well, let's let's talk about Richarlison. Of course, the, the deal was announced today by Tottenham Hotspur Football Club, a five-year deal, uh, a deal worth £60 million. What are your thoughts on Richarlison? Well, to be co- totally candid with you, I only, wa- only watch Tottenham games, so I haven't really seen a lot of him. I don't watch... I'm not a football fan that just watches football. I don't watch other teams. Um especially not Arsenal and Chelsea. 
But um, so what I've seen of him against us, he looks like a really decent player. You know, like like most of us probably watched his YouTube highlights. Uh, he's 50 plus goals at Everton. And um, I think we need someone who's a bit of a master of the dark arts, you know, a bit of a shithouser, if, you, if I can say that. Um, someone who's a bit different because I think Kane and Son are a little bit too nice. You know what I mean? Like, like Jose said in the documentary, we need someone who's a bit more, you know, aggressive and, will do anything to win a game. So I'm on, I'm on board with it. When everyone in our group was sort of saying, Oh, you know, we don't really need that sort of player. I was, I had the opposite feeling to be honest with you. I thought we need someone who's going to score goals and challenge to get in the team and maybe knock, um, I don't know, I hate to say it, but maybe knock Kulu out of the team because, you know, he's 60 million player, isn't he? So is he not, he's not going to come and sit on the bench all the time, is he? I would have thought lots of rotation. Um, Ricky, yeah. Let's come to you. Um, what do you think of the Richarlison deal? I know you've probably seen him a lot in his Everton shirt. I know you probably wouldn't have seen him in his Watford shirt, but what, what do you make of him? <laughs> Sorry, mate. You went on mute. I couldn't really hear you. Uh, it's something about Richarlison, right? Yeah. So, you know, uh, well, look, like, honestly, when I first, when we was first linked with, with Richarlison, I was kind of a little bit kind of com -com sour about it. I thought... He's a, you know, he, he, the, the times, a bit like Brian, when I've seen him play against Spurs, he's been, you know, diving all about the place, moaning like a, you know, I don't know what, winning free kicks left, right and centre. But the more I have looked into it, and Football.London done a great uh, article the other day where they went through all the managers that have worked with Richarlison, including the Brazil manager as well, and, and Ancelotti, and Ancelotti called him a complete striker. Um, a lot of them, have, uh, one of the similar traits throughout every other manager's kind of description of him is hardworking, tenacious, um, a born winner, can play with both feet, good in the air. Um, and, you know, like Brian was saying there, you know, with all those manager remarks, you can tell why Conte wants him, right? You can tell why Conte wants him. Hard worker, warrior, w will do anything to win. And then what Brian was saying there about the kind of the dark arts type type of player, uh, the kind of nasty side of uh, of a player. You think about how many free kicks that we can win off of him, and we're bringing in this new kind of set piece guy. I know it ain't finalised right now, but we're bringing in this new set piece guy. We know we've had trouble with set pieces, but if Richarlison can win us, you know, free kicks left, right, and centre, or even come on to frustrate uh, a team. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, let, yeah. Let's say we're playing against Man City and they kick him up in the air four times. Do you know what I mean? Or he rolls around on the floor and they start getting frustrated and they get out of their rhythm. That puts the ball back in our court. So all I can see is positives across the board. He can play left. He can play right. He can play through the centre. Um, he, he's going to. He's got a little bit of arrogance about him, a little bit of self-belief, a little bit of self-confidence about him, which I really like. I think he's going to push Sonny. I think he's going to push Kane. And I think he's going to push Kulu. And I don't think Conte is going to worry about the price tag of the player. If you turn up to training and put in a hell of a slog and work tremendously hard, then you're in contention to play. You are in contention to play. So, like Chris there was talking about rotation, maybe Kulu starts on the right side and then we can bring uh, uh, Richie off the bench if somebody's fading. If not, if somebody drops off in a game, then we can drop that player put him on the bench, let him have a little bit of a rest, start Richarlison and see what happens there. But they're all pushing each other and competition for places is so key in a competitive game, you know, in a competitive club where we're out here and we're, we're seriously going to challenge not only for the league, but for all the cup competitions that we're in. So you need that. You need that pushing around in every single position that you ain't safe. You ain't guaranteed a start. Unless you put in a shift, unless you do what's asked of you, unless you kind of impress the manager during the week in training. So I am over the moon. Conte wanted him. That means I want him. It doesn't matter how we feel, if, but, or maybe. Conte wanted him. This is about backing the manager from a fan's point of view now. We have to back him and his vision. And it's only exciting times ahead. And I can't wait to see it. <laughs> well said, Rick. Well said. Rich, let's come to you. Your thoughts on Richarlison? I tell you what, I, I I was a fan of him back in 2018 when Everton signed yeah, him, true. and back then I was surprised that Tottenham uh, didn't go in for him. But apparently they were interested then. Um, your thoughts on yeah. him? Yeah, well, I had to look at uh, some of the data around some of the other potential signings as well, 
uh, Jesus and Richardson, very similar numbers. Um, uh, Richardson, uh, better internationally. Um, so last season, including international uh, goals, 16 in total. Um, Jesus, internationally, zero. Um, very similar games played as well. Um, you look at, obviously, what Richardson brings, left foot, right foot, foot very similar to Sonny. Um um, in, instinctive finisher um, always finds the corners um, also quite handy uh, with his head I think we're going to have um, more goals from crosses uh, next season so that brings in a different element um, of that forward play um, I think also because of the five um, substitute rule uh, Richarlison is going to be a real weapon off the bench I think last last season what we were struggling with, we were looking at the bench and we were kind of looking at Lucas, looking at uh, Bergwijn and going, actually, what we're going to get here, we're going to get a Leicester kind of performance from Bergwijn or we're going to get somebody like Lucas that just comes on and, and, and tries to kind of do something. Well, I think Richarlison's more of an impact player. Um, he's going to play a lot of games. Um, again, you look at the, the stats, um, like Lee McQueen always say, look at the stats and... Um, uh, Richarlison, every season, he's playing 30-plus games. Um, and his, his uh, disciplinary record, yes, he does get plenty of yellow cards, but over the last three seasons, they've only been sent off uh, twice in the league. So um, it's not as regular as, as, as people do think. Um, I think you need that bite in the team. We talked last year about some of the soft games we had that we lost or we yep. weren't competitive in. And I think that's not going to happen with, with uh, players like Richarlison in the team. Um, he's going to kind of warm to the crowd because the crowd are going to warm to Richarlison, clearly. And, um, yeah, I believe he's it, uh, definitely a great addition. Uh, there's still other areas that I've talked about in, 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 in uh, past podcasts with you, Chris, that I think we definitely need to look at. But Richarlison is a great addition to the team. It helps though, Rich, doesn't it? The fact that he is so versatile, as Ricky said, and as I keep saying on all of the uh, the yeah. videos that I keep putting out, he can play in the middle, he can play on the left, he can play on the right. For you, what do you think his best position actually is? Um, oh, geez, whether it's coming in from the right, I don't know whether it's um, maybe if uh, Harry uh, is carrying a carrying a niggle and we need to kind of utilise him against one of the um, one of the less teams, whether it's away or home. Um, I think it's uh, maybe that utility player that plays across the front three would be would be ideal. Um, we also need to need to think he's twenty twenty five as well. He's got so many years left yeah. in him. I, yeah. I I listened to Talk Sport and um, and uh, a certain player from the old Arsenal was saying, "Oh, he's twenty five. He's getting on. He needs to prove himself." I'm so, I'm thinking was irregular in the Brazil team that's that's won an Olympic gold medal. Uh, he's won obviously Copa America with uh, Brazil. Uh, Everton, it's it, it, it's obviously uh, kept them up really. Um, the the um, the games that he's played, that he's had to play well to obviously have an impact. He he has. I, I believe that he's going to be versatile. Conte's got him for his versatility, for his work rate, and obviously technically he's seen something that he can actually improve. He will Conte will improve. Uh, Richarlison's uh, goal rate next season, he'll score easily more than 10 goals next year, next year for sure. It's what Conte does. It improves every single player. Um, Brian, sure. let's come to you. Um, Chelsea tried to hijack the Richarlison deal. Surprised? <laughs> oh, no, don't get me started on Chelsea. Um, not at all. It would have been like, you know, like a William situation, wouldn't it, really? Um I mean, that's a club who have mastered the dark arts, isn't it, really? <laughs> Chelsea. Um, I'm actually quite surprised that Everton let him go, um, to be honest with you, because it seems like they've just sold their best player. Um, well, well, do you know what? Credit to Mr Levy, because that must have been some fish meal in Mayfair, and that must have been <laughs> some conversation to be going on, because it, it, it is clear that that meal... And that drink, whatever happened in that restaurant, um, was was the uh, was the deal. Yeah, maybe maybe um, put something in the meal. I don't know, but no, I'm just <laughs> completely surprised that they. I'm not surprised they don't want to let the kid go. Um, you know, the the one who the kid who's from Liverpool and uh, uh, Gordon. Everton. What's his name? Gordon Anthony Gordon. Yeah, 
yeah, yeah. I'm not surprised they didn't, and I'm not surprised he probably didn't want to come to Tottenham. But yeah, I'm just surprised Lampard or the powers that be let him go. I'm, I think we've just got a, a fantastic scoop there, really. Amazing. Yeah, stuff. Proven, proven Premier League goal scorer as well. It's not like a Solgado yep. where kind of just coming from another league. Literally, he is proven at this level and scoring not just against the weaker teams in the league, but also uh, the, the teams that are competitive, the, the real kind of top four teams. He scored against the Liverpools, against the Man Uniteds. So yeah. I, I think he's going to really, he's going to add some value to the team for sure. And I think yeah. last season, he got 13 goals last season in no disrespect, but not, a, you know, Everton are not one of the top teams at the moment, are they? And to get 13 yeah. goals in a not really great team, that's not bad. And, well, and, he's, a, and, and he's, a, he's, he's a Brazilian R9. We've got an R9 on the <laughs> yep. Hotspur boys. A Brazilian R9. Can, can we talk about this for a minute? A Brazilian <laughs> R9 we've got. And he's got, I, I really hope he gets the number nine at Tottenham as well. Oh my gosh, it would, it would look so good. But what I love about this window is everyone is in such a good mood. Everyone's got a permanent smile on their face um, right now. And people keep stopping me and s- s- shouting at me. The trophies are coming, and now yeah. I'm I'm I'm, given, I'm I'm being given permission now to say the trophies are coming. So Come it is on. exciting times. Rick, let's stay with you because um, Jack Wilshere on Talksport earlier today <laughs> said uh, if Arsenal signed Richarlison, he wouldn't even get into their starting eleven. Who? Who said no that? No idea. No Who? idea. That joker. Wheelchair? Did you say Jack Wheelchair? Is that what you said? I, I don't know who you're talking about, honestly. But, um, you know, I mean, uh, you know, if somebody's only had five minutes in football, I mean, five minutes more than me, but only five minutes. I mean, can you really, can you really trust the opinion? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Listen, whatever gooners want to say to make themselves feel better, let them do it. Do not pay any attention. Let us just concentrate on us. Concentrate on Tottenham. Concentrate on on the signings and the uh, and the direction that we're going in. Do not worry about them. Have they got Jesus, a good player? Yeah, they've got a good player. But but just remember that there's circumstances why that player signed for the Gooners. Do you know what I mean? There's no way that somebody uh, of Jesus's quality is going to sign for a Europa Europa playing team. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like. So so he's gone there because he can guarantee starts and he can go and play for the World Cup. Uh, Richard was talking about talk sport the other day. Tim Vickery, a uh, South American expert, was talking the other day and he was saying all the Brazilians this year, the World Cup is, is so important to all of them. You know, it's so important that they stand there on the sidelines when the camera's going down and that teacher that told them that they would never amount to nothing called that girlfriend who, were, who rejected them when they were younger. It's proven everybody, all the doubt is wrong and it, it means something astronomical to the Brazilian players. So look, Jesus went to the Gunas so he could get guaranteed starts. If he was that good, why didn't, he, why didn't he get more games and more minutes for Man City last year? They played with no striker for the majority of the season last year. So, you know, look, the Gunas have got a good player. Well done. Don't worry about what they're saying. Let them say whatever they want to say to make them feel better. Just remember that they are rattled. Because they have never seen Tottenham do this in a transfer window. Not only did we batter them, uh, um, you know, not only did they run and then we battered them in May and, and we secured that full spot and we've got Antonio Conte, but they're going crazy that we're actually doing business in the transfer market. So let them say whatever they want to say. What, I saw a video on Twitter with Robbie and I think Lee Judges, I think it was, or somebody else. And they were talking about how they wanted Richarlison over Jesus. Yeah. So listen, yeah. it's all opinions. It's all opinions. Right now, all I know is that we have signed, sealed and delivered Richarlison, a Brazilian R9 for Tottenham Hotspur. The, the biggest problem position for years has been a secondary striker, an additional striker to Harry Kane. We've now solved that problem with 60 million British pounds. And whether he starts on the bench or whether he starts on the bloody well field, doesn't matter. He's there at Tottenham. We've, we've, we've done the business. We're going places. Don't you worry about anybody else. Rich, let's come to you. Um, as Ricky just said there, there are a lot of fans, opposition fans, very rattled right now. I even had an Arsenal fan come up to me yesterday saying, what on earth are Tottenham buying Richarlison for? He's not even going to play. And I went, well, we're in the Champions League, aren't we? And he couldn't run away from me quick enough, you know, on, on that answer. But... You know, we are signing real quality players and this is the difference because not only are we getting business done early, they're all household names with great experience in the sure. Premier League as well. Now, Ivan Perisic uh, aside, but 
of course, the experience that that guy has got, played in the World Cup final, um, you know, won trophies everywhere he's gone. It is all about experience in this window, isn't it? For sure. And even even Perisic as well. Um, I looked at his stats and, and every season over the last four years, he's played 30 plus games. But last season, um, he scored eight goals, seven assists in his position. Obviously, that flexible uh, position on the left, left-hand left side. Um yeah, I believe that obviously Conte's had that strategy in place where he wants to double up every position um, and obviously then look at those uh, key areas that we struggled with last last year, that set-piece kind of position, uh, which we're definitely going to look at in the transfer market. <laughs> Don't mention Watford. Yeah, mate, uh, are, you, uh, are you at home now or are you, uh, well, are you in the toilet in Watford? I can't Go hear. I've, do you know what? It's kicking in and out. I can't hear nothing. I can't. I'm going through a tunnel. Have you, have you heard this Watford story, Brian? Fake. Jeez, absolutely. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You, you Thank went, you, Brian. Oh, that was the wrong answer, Brian. That was the wrong answer. <laughs> he went. Oh, sorry. No. What was that? No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's a classic, Ricky. You're never going to live it down. But you know, it's all fun. That's do we do we all think do 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 we all think that um, it's not over though? Because I, I definitely think the transfer market isn't over for us. No way, hundred percent. No way. Yeah. Well, well, let, let, let's come on to a rumor today um, circulating from the Daily Telegraph. Uh, Brian, let's come to you on this one. Spurs are considering free transfer Jesse Lingard. Um, I've got to say, um, I'm a big fan of Jesse Lingard, and I think that he could do a tremendous job at Spurs, particularly as you've mentioned, Rich, five subs from the start of next season. I think he has still got a lot to give. I think he will add a lot of quality. And of course, he is a very experienced player. Your thoughts, Brian? I'd take him on a free. I like him as well. I thought he did a great job at West Ham. Um, I don't think he'd get in this, his starting team. He'd be off the bench. But yeah, I think I'd take him on a free. Why not? He's a proven player. He hasn't been doing that great the last couple of seasons, but did well at West Ham. So why not? Yeah, I'd take him. I think he's good. Rich, I just think, I, I, no, I just think um, if we're going to get somebody else um, in the midfield, there just need to be a, a free kick specialist or a dead ball specialist for me. Um, I would kind of, I still would take Ericsson back or somebody like him, Madison. I, I've seen that obviously some people have said Tillemans as well. For Leicester, I've seen quite a bit of him. He's a yep. class act. He can hit a ball like a bullet, like uh, Tom Huddleston used to hit it. Um I think I think for me we just need to kind of look at those areas that are concerned from last year and really tick those off. Um, and we want to be like you said, Chris. We want to be kind of on all fronts, kind of mm. showing we be mean business. I believe we're we're a good centre back, like a real world class centre back, and somebody in that kind of n- number nine kind of maybe that that kind of dead pool position. Somebody, one, two more players away from really being a team that people actually go, Spurs could actually challenge for the Premier League next year. We're very I think some, close. I think some of us are saying it already or certainly thinking it, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> aren't we, <Rick? laughs> Come on. Uh, uh, we're, we're talking a little bit more on that later. Um, Rick, let's come to you. Um, same question. Jesse Lingard, are you a fan? Not really, mate, is, is my honest answer. He's not really one for me. Look I think he's... Five, um, <laughs> I've got you, you mate. Down. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, but, you you know, it's only an opinion. It's only an opinion. Um, I think he done well for West Ham. I don't think he does anything more than Lucas for us, really. And I prefer Lucas in the team. Um, I, I don't know, mate. I, he's just not He's just not for me. I don't, I don't even think he'd be on the bench, to tell you the truth, honestly. Um, I think the, the wages that he's after... I mean, yes, he's a free, but the wages that he's after, uh, I think he's looking at 150, 200 grand or something a week. And then, and then signing on as well. And then Probably signing on bonus. Eight million or something like that would be crazy. Yeah, yeah no, I mean, for, for, for me, I don't think he's the one. And um, I, I, just, I think I'd just prefer other players in, in, in that position. But again, if, if Conte wants him, that, it doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what any of us think. If Conte wants him and he's got a plan for him, then I'm all for it. But personally, for me, I don't think he's the one. Well, that's what I love doing about these shows, because uh, if we all had the same opinion, it would be boring, wouldn't it? 
Um, <laughs> Rich, Rich, let's come back to you. Um, now, about an hour or so ago, Fabrizio Romano put the following out, uh, an update on the Clement Langley uh, situation. Tottenham have now reached a full agreement with Clement Langley on personal terms. He's happy to join Spurs with Antonio Conte pushing to have him. Tottenham and Barcelona are still in direct contact to resolve final details of the loan deal. Then it is here we go. It has been reported in the last couple of days that it will be a two-year loan from Barcelona. Your thoughts on Clement Longley? Is he um, is his contract with Barcelona for two years? Is that the reason why it's a two-year loan? Do you know, um, I think it's... I think for me, so come. Yeah, he, he he actually signed an extension um, back in twenty twenty. Okay. Um, I, I, Again, I think you look at last season, obviously, he fell out with um, the manager, didn't get a lot of game time. I think he played 13 games or something in the league. Um, the seasons before, uh, a starter, a regular. Uh, Conte's looking for that versatility across the back line. Um, and he sees, obviously, the strengths of him on the ball. Um, again, we, we, we just need to... He will be a player that we need to maybe give a little bit of time um, and we're going to have to really look at where he fits. Does he does he obviously cover one of the starters, come into uh, some of the European games or is he going to be just a utility player across the back? Um, I've seen a little bit of him at Barcelona. Um, I know he, he has his critics, um, but I think in a team like Spurs where Conte clearly will Im- improve the other aspects of his, uh, is his play, but uh, we need to we need to remember like the players like uh, Davis and Sanchez who, who improved dramatically over the, the latter part of the, the season. Um, Spurs fans were kind of calling them to be like the first ones out the door. But now I, I tell you, I'd, I'd keep both of them now. I think they've shown their um, that kind of real kind of versatility, especially in um, when the going gets tough. You know what I mean? You need warriors out there, and uh, Sanchez came in at a time that where we need him. And he delivered big, really. Um, and, and for me, that, that's uh, we need to we need to remember that for sure. Brian Clement Langley, do you know much about him, and do you think he'll be a good signing at Tottenham? I watched his YouTube reel this week, and I thought he looked pretty decent. Um, I think if he if he comes, I don't know if he'll get in the starting lineup. He won't get in the back no, three. I don't not. think. Um, and and then do we need? Is he going to sit? With um with Joe Roden and uh, Davinson Sanchez on the bench, um I don't see him starting. Don't see him getting ahead of Dyer or Romero or maybe Davis. But he looks decent. Yeah, he looks quite good. Um, I never like a lot of us. I think I don't don't know anything about him prior to this week, to be honest with you. But he looks good. Um, I don't know if he's he's he'd be my first choice. I think that Bremen looks better than him. And there's a couple of other um centre backs we've been looking at. I don't know if he'd, he'd sort of be a Second or third choice, I think, but yeah, he looks he looks decent. I think. Yeah, I think maybe Roden might go out on loan. I think that's what what yeah. I, I think he might go to Forest uh, out on loan. We'll, we'll talk about Joe Roden in a second, um, Rick. It's, it is all about the squad now, though, isn't it? It's not just about the starting eleven because when you think about last season, Antonio Conte chose. You know, bar injuries, he chose pretty much the same start 11 because those are the players that he trusted. But next season is going to be totally different. It is a squad that he wants to trust, not just the starting 11. Absolutely, bro. Absolutely. And I mean, if you, if we look at some of those conference league games last season, when we played the second team <clears throat> and we didn't have a second team, like we we just about had a first team. And this is just when Conte was turning up, you know, those those couple of games there. That second team that we put out, when we put out a second string to kind of give those first teamers a rest or give them a, you know, a, a, a bit of a break because they've got a little niggle here, here, there or everywhere, the second team couldn't step up to the plate. But right now, we're going to have a second team that are going to be fighting to be in the first team. We're going to have a second team that, are, that have to kind of, you know, adhere to what Conte wants and what Conte says. Otherwise, Fine, there's five subs. Sure, right? Yeah, absolutely. Fight for mm-hmm. that shirt. Fight for your place. But there's five subs. So if you don't want to do it, see you later. Come off. Sit on the bench. We, we, we can chuck somebody else on. And this is where the Clement Langley um, signing is a sensible, smart one. All right? He's a ball-playing defender that can play centre-back or left centre-back. This doesn't mean that our shopping at centre-back is done if and when he does come in, okay? But what it does do, it gives us great cover. If we can't get our number one left centre back, then he can play back up to Davies, who done tremendous last year at the left centre back role. 
and also done tremendous for Wales. You know, he, we saw him playing like, you know, Maldini, some, some were calling him. You know, I know that's an exaggeration, but you know what I mean. Um, so to have somebody that experienced, and, and very comfortable on the ball. Now, the criticism that I've heard is that he's, he's defending. The defending side of things, as we've seen with Dyer and Davies and Sanchez, can be taught, can be trained, can be drilled by Conte. Conte can take care of that. Conte and his, and his coaching staff can take care of that. The, the, the hardest part is having the vision to find those cross-field balls, to find those passes that split defences, to find those passes that confuse the opposition. And Longley, from what I've seen, and like Brian was saying, even at YouTube compilation, from what I've seen, his, his distribution of the ball is, is pretty damn good. You know, um, Matty Hayes, another YouTuber, put up his stats the other day, and all of the, 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 the highest part of his stats were all of the passing stuff and the interceptions and stuff like that. So, you know, uh, you can see what Conte's after. And, and we're not going to be sold short, short right now. So if we go in and we can't get our number ones, we've got a player there that can play centre-back and left centre-back, which also allows us to loan out Tanganga, to loan out Joe Roden or sell him if we want to. Do you know what I mean? That these young players that are not getting no game and, and they're wilting by being at Tottenham, do you know what I mean? Because they're not getting that game time. They can go out and get a season somewhere else, season two season somewhere else, and then come back stronger for us. Right now, it's a no-brainer because we're not paying no money for him. If we, we can't get our centre back, our left centre-back first choices, Guardiola and Bastoni, if we can't get them, it's sensible for him to come in to cover that so that we don't spend money that we don't have to just for spending money's sake. Do you know what I mean? Just for spending money's sake. Yeah, sure. Is, uh, have, we got, have we got great uh, targets out there in Cape and everybody else? There's Indica. There's great uh, alternatives there. But if Conte and Paratici think that they're not the ones and we're going to hold out for the number one, I think that's a big boy. That's a big boy attitude. That's a big club mentality. Do you know what I mean? So I think it makes sense all over the field what he's doing and how he's doing it. Well, well, Rick, they, they withdrew that hundred million pounds not so long ago. They've spent the 60. So that 40 is just sitting there, you know. There's a well, lot of money there as well. There's but, the other 50. Plus, when you think that you could sell the likes of La Celso on Don Bele, uh, Harry Winks, Joe Roden, you know, that list is pretty long. If that money all went towards future signings as well, I'll tell you what, um, we'll come on to that question um, that I don't want to give away at the moment at the end of the show. Um, Rick, let's stay with you a second because Rob writes a comment, and thanks for your comment, Rob. Um, big up, lads. So happy to sign Richarlison. Should have signed him from Watford. Excited to see um, him, Hunmin Son, Harry Kane. He is our Christian Romero in the forwards. Glory days back. Now, when you think Hunmin Son, Harry Kane, Dijan Kulusevski, and now Richarlison, is there a better front line in the Premier League? Not right now, mate. Not right now. We are cooking. <laughs> and also, I think a lot of people are forgetting that Kulu is as versatile as everybody else. Kulu can play left. He can play right. He can play attacking mid if we want. He can play right wing back if we want him to. So Kulu, just because Richarlison might start in a forward position, doesn't mean that we're not starting Kulu. Do you know what I mean? Doesn't mean that we haven't got him still there to come off the bench or to... So the rotation and the competition is next level. So right now, mate, you know, I don't think so. I don't think so. I know a lot will say Man City with Haaland, of course. They're, they're always going to be fire. Do you know what I mean? Liverpool with Nunes, of course. But they're, Nunes, uh, Liverpool have lost Mane, which is going to be a big loss. They've also and lost... And they're Uribe. unproven as well. They're unproven. I, yeah, right, the yeah, right. Um, unproven. And they've lost Origi, who's, who's a guy that really gets them out of trouble when nobody else steps up. Do you know what I mean? So they're, they're having a little bit... Of, we don't know what Liverpool we're going to see right now. So right now we've got uh, on form... And, um, you know, especially towards the end of the season, we've got one of the most frightening front threes or front fours yeah. in the sure. league right now. In the league yeah. right now. And That's the nice. bench is going to look epic as well. The benches are going to look frightening for teams. Like, so, yeah. I think that's the thing that, that's going to um, enhance the, the games. We're, I believe that consistency is going to be key next to, to season to where we finish. Because, obviously, last year, with obviously the, the start we had, with obviously Conte coming in, and then he was obviously changing that philosophy of the team. Um, consistency from the start. That's why obviously Conte wants to get all the players in before we start, obviously, pre-season. He really wants to kind of get 
sell the kind of philosophy um, of him and his kind of backroom staff and then start like, because he's not had, remember, he's not had a full off season with any of the players. Think what he's going to do to these players, the likes of Davis, do you know what I mean? Dyer, those ones that have improved through playing games, not through training, through playing uh, playing games. So being on that training pitch, what Conte is all about is kind of seeing the player, improving the player, and then putting that into practice. Uh, that's why I believe that we're going to be a lot better um, than last season. I think better. a few of us. I think a few of us have actually said it before, Rich, on on previous shows that you know think about what Antonio Conte could have done with his squad with a pre-season, but with all yeah. these additions, it, I tell you, it's just so exciting. Um, right, Rich, yeah. Conte seems to love a versatile player. Now, Ivan Perisic, everyone's expecting him to come in and play as a left wing back. Um, are you expecting him to play left wing back? Because we know he's got a great right foot as well. He could even play right wing back. Uh, who knows? And then I think that's the that's the exciting thing, right? That's the exciting thing. Where where is he going to fit? Which part of the puzzle is he? Which which colour of the picture is Perisic going to be? And and, and that's the uh, exciting thing. Uh, you look at his stats, and for somebody that isn't that kind of naturally attacking uh, winger, um, he is a player that is versatile across that midfield within those wing back roles. Yeah, I, I believe he, he might play in different positions in different games, depending on, obviously, who we play. Um, and don't be scared of his age. I, I hear a lot of rubbish about being, what is it, 33. It's ridiculous. He's he's a he's a machine. He's a machine of a player. He's literally, last last five seasons, played 35 games plus. And injury-wise, very, very limited to injuries. So, I believe he's going to be a key part of the... Uh, the team and also uh, we're obviously talking a lot about um, some of the other players that we've signed in but I think Perisic is going to be one of those players that we go actually he's going to really shine in the Premier League next season Brian do you think that um, Antonio Conte will get everything on his shopping list because you know the last couple of weeks I've had uh, many journalists on and they all seem to think Antonio Conte is going to get exactly what he wants I I think he'll get another two or three players in before the end of the window. I'm not sure if everyone will be his first choice, but um, from what we've seen so far, the four so far have been phenomenal, haven't they? Really, um, I just I think I think he'll get yeah another another few. Who it will be hard to say, but um, um, I think Rick is right though. I think Rick Rick is right. I think if if he doesn't want to be, if he's not his first choice, I don't think they'll come. I think now, right? I think we've got the, the team available. I think. Literally, he won't go for second or third choice. I think he'll go for uh, the players he wants that can make us challenge for the title next year. Has there been any more rumours about that that kid, um, Hakan, from Ke- uh, Inter? Because uh, he looks really fantastic to me. Ke- Kalalogu, Kal- Kalahogu, something yeah. like that. The Turkish player. Yeah. Um, no, I- I've only heard the one rumour, but Chris, being the uh, transfer expert, speaking to Fabrizio <laughs> and... And Sky Sports <laughs> yeah. and Bridgie and all these guys. What what do you say, Chris? Anything else on him? No. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the, the, the thing is, we all know now, Fabio Prachi is constantly looking at players. I tell you, this this guy is a workaholic. He just does not stop. He's constantly on his phone. Um, you know, imagine his phone book. He's probably... Um, you know, got 5,000 contacts in, in his phone, but it's just incredible. But deal after deal after deal. And it's funny, isn't it? Because you think like last week, Spurs fans on Twitter are in, in a bit of a meltdown saying, oh, it's all gone dead. We've only signed three players and uh, you know, we haven't done anything else. I think there is so much more to come. And, and as I've said out on Twitter and, and out on these shows before as well, I think that this window is probably going to go down as the best window in Tottenham's history. I really do. Yeah, I because yeah, for sure. it is obvious. They are back in Antonio Conte. It is the 1st of July. We've got four signings over the line already. Lengley looks like that's going to get done. Spence is very close, who we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, there's now talk about Conte probably wanting another striker and another centre-back. I'll tell you what, all of these additions, he is building something special. And, and Fabio is working um, his backside off at the moment and doing tremendous work. So full credit um, to everybody at the football club at the moment for, for putting us in this position. But for me... Um, as a big Spurs fan, I just love to see this ambition of we're finally going to do it. And, and this is why I keep going on about trophies, because it's got to happen. It's got to happen. 
We're gonna, um, go, we're gonna get the quadruple next year. That's what I think. Come on, Brian. <laughs> We're going to surprise everyone. Great. But when Chris, Come can on. I ask you a question? When you go to Korea in a couple of weeks, you can have a word with uh, Paratichini's ear. I'll try. <laughs> have you booked your I'll tickets be, yet? Do, do you know what, Brian? He, he probably won't even be there um, because, right. you know, although he would love to be there, I, I doubt he will be because he will be very, very busy and he'll be mm-hmm. jetting all around Europe trying to get deals done. And another subject we're going to come on to uh, in a minute is uh, possible departures because – it's so strange, isn't it, as Spurs fans, because we normally have to wait for players to go out the door before we get players in the door, which, of course, is very, very different again this summer. Um, Ricky, let's come to you, because um, a comment here on screen from Teddy. Um, when you look at that team that he's put on the screen, um, it's starting to look pretty decent, isn't it? As, as Rich said as well, you know, the sub bench. The sub bench for me next season is absolutely key. And as I mentioned earlier about rotation, when you think of the Champions League and Brian's dreaming about the quad already um, of, you know, the FA Cup and the League Cup, which, you know, those trophies, dare I say, are way overdue, as I keep saying. Um, But it is all about depth and it is all about rotation in the squad. Absolutely. Absolutely. And like you said there, Chris, there's more to come. You know, there's more to come. Just just because we bring in, I don't know whether Lengley's done and dusted right now, but just because we bring in Lengley doesn't mean that if an opportunity to go and get Bastoni or Gavardia or somebody massive, don't think that we're not going to take that opportunity because we will. You know, um, you know, like you said about attacking midf- midfield or another forward, like they they are still. Th- this is not over yet. This is not over yet. And he's he's building a fortress. I spoke to you many a time, Chris, last year about Conte and a toolbox. And he's he's getting his two toolbox. He's getting his Dremel. He's getting his screwdriver. <laughs> he's getting the lot, mate. He's getting his no no nails. What is it called? Liquid nails. All of that. No. He's getting it. Whatever Before he needs. you mentioned the triangle, and, and and everyone was saying, "What's a tri? What's a triangle? What what, what we doing with the triangle?" <laughs> You know that I don't know what it's called. I'm not in construction. I'm just an actor. But you know that my, my dad is going to be so upset at me for even rehashing this joke. But you know, there's a thing to magic. You know, to work out if the corners are level or so. It's, it's like an L. It's got like two. I don't know. What I know it's what you called, mean. Right? I know what you mean. I don't know what it's called. But like even that, mate. I, I can only describe it as a protractor from like you know that little maths. <laughs> You know the WH Smith little math set, the little tin that you used to get with all yeah. that palaver in it? Anyway, that's the only way I can describe it. But listen, Conte wanted tools and he's getting tools galore. He's getting the best tools Black & Decker can offer, let me tell you. All right? And we're going to be able to go to work on any surface, any area, any environment. We're going to be able to go to work. And it's super exciting times ahead, mate. Super exciting times ahead. And listen, Chris, as a fan, right, that goes week in, week out, home and away, Right? How excited are you to get back to the Tottenham Stadium and to go watch the boys, bro? I know you're going preseason, but how how excited are you to get back to the league and back to these so, competitions? I can't tell you. I've I've had a smile on my face, uh, you know, for the last few weeks. It's been absolutely superb, and I'm expecting so much more to happen. But very very exciting. I just keep using that word exciting and how excited I am. Um, when you think last year. I was preparing to go to um, Paco de Ferreira in the Europa <laughs> Conference League. And now I can't wait until the 25th of August when the, uh, the Champions League draw is and going back to the clubs that, you know, we, we want to play. Bayern Munich, Barcelona, Real Madrid, etc. Um, yeah, I just can't tell you how excited I am. But this guy, Antonio Conte, is the man. He really is. And if we can't win a trophy under Antonio Conte, I don't know what on earth we do next as a football club because this guy is changing the mentality. Um, and... Yeah, I just can't say that word enough, Rick. Just so excited. Really am. He, um, he, he, he won't stop till he gets it done, Chris, all right? He yeah. won't stop until he's holding that trophy above his head. Don't you worry. But he's definitely a league manager, which we'll, we will come on to all shortly. Right, OK. Um, Rich, um, a comment here from Rob. Uh, Hakimi from PSG and Delit from Juventus closed the window uh, for me. Um, what else do Tottenham Hotspur need to do to, uh, to really uh, put a smile on your face? Oh, just continue, just continue what we're doing at the moment. Um, I think last season, uh, Conte overachieved with the squad uh, from the position that he, he obviously got. Um, and what he what he's done is he's kind of looked at the, the situation and gone, what we need to do is we need to upskill our, our squad. We need to look at the, the ability of squad, the challenges, some of the obstacles, and really go for like some 
some better players. And those other players are the ones that are going to be moved on. Those players that aren't that are going to take that aren't going to take us from fourth into third to second to challenge. So that's the reason why I think everybody is very excited because we know that Conte has got that pull because the the rest of the players have seen what Conte has done to all these players. They've seen that they can improve. The thing is as well with Conte because he's a workaholic with the team. You're not going to come to Spurs if you're just a lazy ass player. No way. You know if you, you and I think that's why some of the some of the players that are on those big wages that want to just that chillax on the bench, they aren't going to get in, into the, the Spurs squad, never mind onto the pitch, because Conte is not going to let that happen. It's happened with Spurs in the past, where players have coasted through games. It's not going to happen. And whether that's the, one of the reasons why Ericsson hasn't signed up to yet, I'm not sure. But um, clearly, he likes Ericsson. He, he's worked with him before. There's something that says maybe the commitment isn't really there to kind of push that over the line. Brian, let's come to you. Um, are you worried that we're not getting any of these players out at the moment? Because the likes of Harry Winks have been linked to Everton and Leeds. Uh, Everton have dropped the interest now in Harry Winks. Don't look that like that one's going to go ahead. Nottingham Forest were looking at Joe Roden, as Rich mentioned earlier. Ajax don't want to pay the money for um, Stephen Bergwijn, what Tottenham are asking for. Uh, Villarreal cannot afford what Tottenham want for Giovanni Lo Celso. No interest whatsoever in Tongi Ondombele. Atletico Madrid want Emerson Royale on loan, not a permanent deal. And no interest as yet on Sergio Reguilon. Yeah, I think they'll all... Uh, well, I've, I've never been a fan of Harry Winks. He's more, nobody's more Tottenham than Harry Winks, really, are they? But unfortunately, I've, as my friends at LA Spurs know, I've always been a sort of a, he should go out to Hull City kind of guy for the last few years. But um, I think we'll end up getting rid of a lot of them. And, I mean, if we don't, if you think about it, we'll have a pretty stacked bench if they don't. Because over the last few seasons, it's been, for me, it's been you like look at the bench in the Conference League or in some of the Cup games and you go, oh, yeah, I kind of know that kid. He's from the, from the youths, from the junior team. Um, but a lot of times I'll say, who? Never even heard of him. At least if we have a stacked bench of players we couldn't get rid of, that won't be such a bad thing. But other than the wages bill, but I think we'll get, I think Berg, Bergy and Winksy and uh, I'd keep more of though. Um, and Lo Celso and Undumbale seem like a bit of a lost cause. But if they come back and I saw some video of Undumbale this morning, I think it was training hard somewhere in it. It might have even been in LA or something. But he looks like he's, um, you know, maybe trying to get back into the to Conti's good graces and, um, you know, have a good off-season, uh, pre-season, I mean, and um, we'll see what happens. But, I mean, for me, over the last two years, if Ndombele could come back miraculously and just be the player we all know he is, that would be, that. I mean, that would, if he could fit into the midfield somewhere, that would be a dream come true, I think, really. Is it realistic, Brian? No, I don't think he is. <laughs> I think he's a, he's a lost cause, but um, we, you know, we don't know. He's still he's still young, isn't he? Youngish, and um, I mean, he's got the talent. He just doesn't have the um, doesn't have the desire. It seems like, does it? The Lucas Mora one for me is an interesting one because he's out, he's out of contract next season, next summer, um, but he does have a, a one year option to extend. Um, Ricky, if an offer come in now uh, to Tottenham. Would you take it? I think that you would probably have to. Sen sentiment aside, all right? I, I, I love Lucas and I know Lucas loves the club and I love it when, when players are passionate about playing for Spurs. No one's going to be able to take away that night in Amsterdam. No one. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's going to live on in the memory of all of us for a very, very yeah. long time. We're, we're, we're going to tell our kids and our grandkids about Lucas and, and that night, all right, in the Amsterdam uh, arena. But with a year left and him already kind of speaking about seeing out the year and then possibly going to Brazil, it, that, would have to, that would have to be a lot of good graces with the club. You know, Levy doesn't like to take a loss. But, um, and I think him kind of saying that if an offer did come in that was significant, I would say 20, 25 mil or something like that. I think they would take it because it's better to get something in than nothing in. Do you know what I mean? And and reinvest it. And and I think that this is where the club are being a little bit more ruthless 
And and what we've asked for, we've asked for them to be ruthless. We've asked, you know, we, we knew as soon as Conte came in, it was going to be a very ruthless kind of sweep of, of, of everything. Do you know what I mean? Whether that be players or board or staff. And it's happening little bit by little bit. We're seeing it. So it's, the same applies with with Lucas. But I mean, I, I, I love him to bits. I, I think he would be a great squad player for next year. Um, and, um, and, and on the outgoings, Chris, I would not worry at all. I would not worry at all. And I'll give you a couple of examples. Sergio Aurier and Deli Alley. All right? Sergio Aurier, we paid up his contract so that we could sign uh, Emerson Royale uh, at, at right back, right wing back. But but for the first time ever, we paid up a contract and said, all right, see you later. We, it doesn't matter. All right, we can't get anything for you. All right, go. But because we need you out of the squad and we need you off the wage floor. Same thing happened with Delhi as well. We gave him basically to Everton for free. You know, um, so that tells me that we're acting like a big boy club where we're recruiting first and then selling second, which we've all wanted every single summer instead of sell to buy, sell to buy, sell to buy. And then we miss out on all of our top targets and then we're waiting until transfer deadline day again. So um, I would not worry whatsoever. Leave it to leave it in Don Paratici, Paratici's hands. He will get it sorted. Now, whether that's a loan or a, 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 a sell, uh, cool. He'll get it sorted. Um, on 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 Tangai, look, I was a big massive fan of Tangai, um, but I think after that Morecambe game, that Morecambe game was really hard to come back from. Uh, it's almost unfor- unforgivable, almost. Um, but if we can't shift him and he stays in the squad and he can get through an Antonio Conte preseason, which he's going to be worked solid, do you know what I mean? Like he's going to be running to the ground. If he can survive that and, and prove to Conte that he's worth a spot on the bench, and instead of him playing until 60 minutes, we bring him on for 60 minutes until the end of the game, maybe he could be a game changer. This is just me looking at the silver lining of the, the, the whole scenario. Maybe he can well, be a game changer in that, in, in that aspect. An interesting question for you, Rick. Um, Spurs fly to South Korea this time next week. Is Tongyon Dombele, Giovanni Lo Celso, uh, players like Stephen Bergwijn, are they on the plane? I, my my head and my heart tells me no. My head and my heart tells me no because we're we're going we're, we've made it definitive that these guys are on the on the out list. So I think they'll stay back at Hotspur away, and I think they'll try and get them deals done. Do you know what I mean? But if Conte decides that he wants to take one or two and have a look at them, then let's have a look. Let's have a look. I never want any of my my Tottenham players to fail. Do you know what I mean? I never wanted yeah. Bentley to fail. I didn't want Doherty to fail. I didn't want I didn't want anyone. I didn't want anybody to fail at our club. I want them to succeed and get to the highest of heights and take us um, a, a, along the journey with them. So, if he can convince Conte, and if Conte wants him in the squad, then again, if Conte wants him, I want him. You know, um, if Conte can forgive him then it will take a little bit longer, but I, I can forgive him too, you know? So, but but to answer your question, I would say no. I would leave them at Hotspur away, um, make that, you know, draw that line uh, and keep them on the, on, it's gonna on the be, transfer It's list. going to be ruthless, I think. I think it's going to be ruthless and he's just going to go, look, you're not in the plans. Look, we need to, we need to kind of cut our losses here and then move them on. I, I, I don't believe he'll, I think he's already made his mind upon those players. Yeah, I believe too. Rich, uh, comment on screen now. I'd like Lingard on a free. The guy has creativity. When he's crocheting. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> you don't look impressed. Is, it, no, is he not I, a good bench player to come off? Create something for us? No, I don't, I don't see how that fits into um, into, the, into the team at all. No, I, um, I don't know. Maybe there's better off options there. I think he's just going to come to Spurs for the money, isn't he? He's not going to come because uh, he loves the club. He wants to fight for the shirt. I, I, I don't see it. Um, there's, there's probably better options out there. Um, but yes, we need to definitely look at obviously our uh, international straight home growing quarter uh, quarter players moving into the season, and um, he, he might be an option. I don't. I don't see it to be honest. I think it's a lot of money for a player that's going to play a really small bit part. Um, a part with the team, not for me, somebody else. Next and question. Richard Rice on here, um, <laughs> practice for Conte. We're going to need a bigger bus. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, it will turn into the party bus with a trophy at the end of it going down Tottenham High Road. That's what we want. 
We really do. Um, Brian, let's come to you. Now, we talk about improvements on the pitch. Now, it has been reported in the last week that Spurs um, are trying to improve off the pitch. Greta Steenston uh, is coming in as a performance director. Gianni Vio uh, as a set-piece specialist. Um, this is yet another, you know, more proof of Antonio Conte trying to change things at the club, change the mentality. Um, are you surprised that we haven't even got a set-piece specialist already? I didn't know we didn't have one, but I saw the the reports on Vio. Um, very exciting about that, actually. I think that's one of our biggest weaknesses, the set piece for corners and free kicks. Um, I think it's going to be good. It's going to be great. Um, not sure of their pedigree, but if, if uh, Paratici and Conti like him, I think he's from Juventus, isn't he? The Vio guy. So, But we definitely need the backs... There's, there's, there's always a little bit of a mistake going on there, and I think if we can improve that, it would be, um, you know, it would be uh, definitely much better, much better than what we've been seeing over the last couple of years. Definitely, Sonny needs to take some free kicks, doesn't he? What's that? Definitely. Yeah, Sonny. Sonny, Sonny needs to, um, yeah. Oh, is he a defensive uh, sp- sp- a dead ball specialist, or is he everything? The, I think he's every score. Oh, yeah. even better. Yeah. Didn't realize that. I thought he was just on defensive. But so, yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree with you, Rich. Um, Hummin Son has definitely got to be on those free kicks at the start of the season. Definitely. Yeah. Um, Rick, let's come to you. Um, you mentioned uh, my my shirt that I'm wearing here, the new training uh, shirt. What do you make of it? Um, it brings out the colour in your eyes, Chris. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 I was going to wear sunglasses on this particular show. Do you know what I mean? We, we, we've got lemon over there, Richard, and we've got lime over here, Chris. So <laughs> lemon and lime. <laughs> we've got the seven up crew. Lemon up and lime, today. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, but you wear it well. You wear it well, Chris. Thank you. Well, let me just say thank you to uh, Get Here, who are, of course, the official training wear partner of Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. You can download their app and order your groceries and you will receive them in minutes. A fantastic service. So thank you very much. Um, now, the last question um, of today's show. Uh, actually, let's uh, let's talk about Jed Spence before I get on to the last question. Um, Rich, you know, um, you've watched Jed Spence a lot. You live in Nottingham. Um, yeah. What do you make of Jed Spence? A lot, lot of buzz around him, obviously. Um, under 21, uh, international, um, uh, played very well last season in the Cups of Four Forest. Um, very, very quick. Um, improved his um, crossing ability. Um, likes to go to the line. Um, likes to beat players. But obviously, you saw the shenanigans after, obviously, um, Forrest got promoted with him and uh, Warnock. He's confident. I think you need to, to be that to, to move into the Premier League. Um, what are we getting that's different? I think pace. Um, I think um, that kind of counter-attack play, I think he'll be great on that. Um, he's got a great right foot as well. Um I think as a young player, uh, he's definitely one for the future. I, again, I think um, Conte's seen his attributes. He's seen his speed. He's seen his ability to cross the ball. He's not afraid to cross the ball. Like when um, Emerson does that, that that thing where he, it's kind of a step over. He does that step over thing where you know he's like trying to kind of dummy the cross. No, just get the ball in, mate. Just get the, every time. Just get the ball in. Like with Spence is just all the time. He's um, so. Like Harry and Richarlison, they're going to have a lot of ball on the plate. They just need to finish, uh, especially if this boy like, really does push on. Um, he had a good season last year, obviously, with Forrest. I think under Conte, he's going to improve technically. Um, and also, a lot of like defences are going to be scared of him running at them um, because he definitely did that for Forrest. Forrest were in the, the bottom three before a change of manager. Spence came in from Middlesbrough and literally they went, they went on a crazy run of 18, 19 games unbeaten where they were just kind of destroying teams. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing him, hopefully in a Spurs shirt. I think he's, he's, uh, he's going to be a very good player for Spurs. Brian, it was reported by Sky Sports yesterday that Spurs are now in advanced talks with Jed Spence. Um, good signing for you? Yeah, from what I've seen of him, when I 
when we first reported that we were in for him, I started watching him, watching his uh, highlight reel. He looks really good. He looks like an improvement. That's the thing about Emerson. I think he's, I don't know if he has the, you know, the, the football brain. I think he's got the enthusiasm, but I don't think he's got that like last final, the final ball or, and they scored a couple of goals. One was a bit of a fluke, but um, I think Spence just seems like he's got it going on as, as opposed to, I think it'd be an improvement maybe over the renewed Doherty as well. Um, but I think he walks straight into the team, to be honest with you. I think then Emerson and Doherty are on the bench or, or Emerson goes out maybe to uh, Madrid or whoever. But I think he's I think he's an immediate starter from what I've seen, you know, from what we've seen in his highlights. What, the one thing I will say, Brian, is I think um, if him and Regas play either side, it gives us a lot of pace as wing-backs. Um, yeah. And then also kind of, <clears throat> Doherty showed his versatility when he was playing really well within those those positions, and obviously to drift inside and to be more of a, a kind of a ball player from the back. Um, I think our defensive um, kind of transition definitely uh, has changed. It's more forward thinking, and obviously those wing backs do cut inside. So I think when Regers and um, maybe Jed Spence does do sign. I think that would be more of a very much of a counter-attacking kind of play. Where when Doherty plays, I think he's obviously not got the same kind of pace and obviously does or and can come in inside and uh, be a bit more of a ball player from that wing-back position. Do you think Reggie can stay with the team though? With... I don't know. I, I'm not, I'm, I think I'd probably still keep him, I think. Me like, personally, I know a lot of, a lot of the Paris are saying that he's maybe already gone. Perisic will be number one choice, and I think that Ryan yeah. Session will be second. Yeah, yeah. But just remember all the games we've got to play, and also um, yeah. that versatility of Perisic. I think Perisic, you will not play in that position uh, all season. Guaranteed, he won't. Um, I believe that he might play in a different position across that um, that midfield. Um, maybe he might play when we're getting kind of outnumbered in the middle. He might drop into the middle and kind of be a bit of a a ball player midfielder as well that kind of just read the play. I think um, his versatility will show that he will definitely play. He won't be stuck out on the on the wing. He'll he'll definitely drift inside and be more of a when we're getting out running midfield, which I don't think we will do with the players that we've actually signed in those positions. But if we do and when we do, I think he'll come inside and really support the uh, the numbers in the middle. Just before we go on to the last question, I just wanted to read a, a quote out from Neil Warnock on Twitter. And uh, I tell you, Neil Warnock on Twitter, very entertaining. If you don't follow him, do it. Um, as a player, I would say Spurs are more attractive club to join than Arsenal, uh, which I thought was a great comment. Um, Ricky, let's go on to the last question um, of the show. Um, can and will Tottenham Hotspur challenge for the Premier League next season? Of course they will, mate. Of course they will. What are we talking about? I told you on the last show, bro, minimum we're finishing second. Minimum we're finishing second. Now, n- listen, I'm going to go off a bit because I didn't get to answer do, about Jed do, do, do you know what, Rick? The, lo- the last time you were on and you, and you actually said, I think we'd be challenging for the Premier League, I was like, no, nah, I don't think so. I think he's getting a little bit carried away. But I tell you what, these last few days, I'm with you. Listen, what does Conte want? What does he want? He wants the challenge for the league. He wants the league more than anything else. He wants to go up against all those top, top managers, Pep, Klopp, Tuchel, the lot of them. He wants to go up against a lot of them and come out the winner. He wants to be raising that trophy more than he does anywhere else. So that's why I said to you, bro, second, I I reckon we're going to break up that top three. Do you know what I mean? And I reckon second is going to be minimum. I think we are going to challenge for it, you know? Um... So, yeah, it's exciting times. But, look, just just let me do it real, real quick about Jed Spence and, and the right-back situation. I think Jed Spence, like Brian said, will be the number one right-back when he turns up. The number one right-wing back. I think he's going to be the best person played there. Uh, best person available there. Is he raw a little bit? Yes, of course he is. He's young. Um, but what I saw in the semi-final, uh, in the playoffs, the semi-final I watched, and in that game against the Gooners, I saw him put Martinelli in his pocket, right? And Mate, I saw him like, man, like, yeah. like deal with the Gooners like he is a premiership player. That that semi-final that I watched, he was so commanding and he was so like like confident. He was pointing left, right and centre. He's like, give me the ball here, give me the ball there or run here, run there. And I love that commanding nature from him. 
So I think, like Brian said there, I think he comes in and he's the number one right wing back if, if and when he does come in. Um, when it comes to Doherty and Royal, Doherty, I think we've seen the best of him. And at 30 years old, I would sell him while he, we've seen a bit of the best of him and we might be able to get something. The longer you, he's you, us, you would sell him now? He, he was, he's being called Doherty. the Irish Cafu like, at the end of uh, last season. Uh, Listen, yeah, it, and, and you know what? We can call him the Irish Cafu, but he was only the Irish Cafu for five games, bro. And we've had him for two and a half years. Do you know what I mean? So, so for me, <laughs> what, while we're calling him Cafu, let's get seven, eight mil for him. And that, that splits the Jed Spence price in half. And we've got seven, eight mil to go towards somebody else, okay? That's for me on Doherty. If you sell Royale, I think you have to sell Doki as well. And we have, we've got to go and get another right back, right wing back as well. I just, but a lot of us fans are split on both of our right backs. Some can't stand yeah. Royale and some can't stand Doki, which says to me, if we're both, if we're all 50 50 on each, each of those players in that position, that means that, you know, we haven't seen what we need to see for, from these players in that position. Yeah. Royal is a bit younger, so there's a higher ceiling with him. When given the responsibility, responsibility last year, when he didn't have nobody else to come in and, and step in for him, he played really, really good. You know, we, we tweaked the system a little bit and he, he actually took that responsibility on his shoulders. Can he still not find a cross properly? Yes, he can't find a cross. But with Vio coming in and a preseason coming in, what type of, Gabriel, uh, uh, what type of Royale are we going to see? Do you know what I mean? On Regulon, I think he's a dynamite player, but I think that we, he's still young enough for us to loan him out. In, in a sense of, Perisic is 33. We've got him on a two-year deal. If we loan him out for a year, two years, then Perisic can leave when he's retiring and then Reggie can come back in and be a better player for us as well. Or we sell him and put that to Bastoni or somebody else or somebody, you know, tremendous, you know? So... That, that, that's my uh, thing on the wing backs there. Sorry, I just had to get it in real quick. So you think we're going to win this Premier League? Or can we Absolutely. challenge it? Absolutely, Chris. Come on, mate. I told you, mate. I'm, I'm putting a bet on individual. I'm not going to do accumulator. I'm not going to do the quad like Brian, right? But I'm going to do a little bet, which is like, we're going to win the league. We're going to win the FA Cup. We're going to win the League Cup. And we're going to win the Champions League. I'm going to do them four separately because I guarantee you, I feel it in my water. At least one, if not two of those things are going to come off next year. I'm, I can feel it, Brad. I can feel it. Rich, are me and Ricky getting carried away here? <laughs> Mate, what is, what is Ricky drinking, man? Are you sure that's just water? <laughs> just water, <laughs> bro. Just water. Just water. That's it. Um, obviously, we're going to clearly be better next year. Um, you look at the business that other, other teams are doing. Um, man United are no way going to be as shit as they were last year. Um I think um, we're going to be a lot closer to um, Liverpool and Man City. I think Man City are obviously in that transition period. I think maybe they're going to regret getting rid of some of their some of their so-called fringe players, but I'm not sure a Sterling or a, a Jesus would be seen as a fringe player. Um, obviously, banking on a player like Haaland kind of coming in and scoring 40-plus goals in a season we know what happened to Lukaku at Chelsea. Um, I, th I think for me, it's um, Haaland's going to be a success. I don't think he's going to be uh, the dynamite, that consistent playing in the mm -hmm. Premier League. Also, injury-wise, um, Haaland playing on a cold night in like... Um, Manchester. December. <laughs> yeah, cold night in Manchester. Yeah, a wet night. A wet <laughs> night in Manchester, right? A cold <laughs> night in Watford. <laughs> do you know? Do you know? Do you know what I mean, though, man? I just, I just, for, for me, you've got to go back to like statistics, and but you also got to go back to what your gut says. And the gut says to me that says that Haaland's going to be a success, but I'm, I'm thinking that he's going to find that first season a, a bit, a bit tougher than people think. Um, and yeah, Pep knows a great player. He's obviously signed one of the world's best. I'm not sure he's going to hit the hit the, uh, the the floor running straight away. I think Spurs for me are going to are going to challenge for the Premier League next year. We still need still need a couple of those pieces. Uh, we definitely need a strong centre back, Romero esque, like another Romero esque. That would be absolutely ace. Um, and I think if, we need if, uh, if we got that rich, if, if we've got another yeah. centre back that you'd be really impressed with. Would would that change your attitude of, of thinking then we could really challenge? Because 
you know, realistically, yeah, no, no, what, what, what do we really need to to go that next level up to Liverpool, Man City? Yeah, consistency. We've we've um, in the past we've um, and I think Rick uh, alluded to it earlier about um, you looked at the bench and I think the players like how many games did we think last season? Sonny looks like he's kind of he's like gassed it. He kind of he's finishing ninety minutes or ninety four minutes. And literally, yeah. he was on his knees and he'd put like everything into the game and then he'd have to come back like four days later and then play the next game. And I remember watching him at home against Burnley towards the end of the season. I was like going, this this kid needs a rest. He literally is like, you, you can't bust your ass every game and expect to recover and then come back and do the same again. Um, he's going to get a rest. He's going to get time. On the, on the bench or a rest against some of the top teams because we have got quality. We have got quality. Where when before we were looking to the bench, going, and and Bello is going to come on. Is he going to do anything? Lascelles is going to come on. Where does he fit? Uh, Bergwijn comes on. Are we going to get that one in five dis- display? Moore is just going to do a lot of work, but there's no real end product. Where now we've got like this. These players are going to come off the bench and really have an impact. Um, how close are we going to be? It's I'd, I'd have to kind of sit down statistically and actually look look at um, how close we're going to be. But I I think we're going to be so much closer. Um, maybe second next year. I don't think we're going to win it. Or maybe second next year, but we're definitely going to be challenging. Brian, what are you thinking about the question about Bale or in LA or <laughs> oh, about? about... <laughs> About us challenging for the Premier League. Um, why not? I mean, Conti's there for to win, isn't he? He's not there just yeah, to have a, sure. fun, a fun time. Um, he wants to win. And I think if with possibly the top three manager in the world, why not? I think we can... I'll be disappointed if we don't... I mean, maybe I'm overreaching, but I'll be disappointed if we don't win two, two out of the four next year. Come and, on, Brian. And, <laughs> you know, I mean, we, you know, what happened in 2019? Who, who'd have believed that, really? So, um, it's, it's possible. Why not just go for it? He's, if he, I think if we get another two, seriously though, I think if we get another two or three players in, and we've got a bench full of like players you've heard of, as opposed to all, you know, a few academy players, I think we can challenge it for it all. Why not get a good mm-hmm. draw? Shouldn't be afraid of anyone at the moment. I'm really excited. Can I, I just. Can I just say one thing? I think the players that we talked about about going, do we see those players in a in a championship winning side? No. That's why they need to go. That's why Bergwijn, that's why Royale needs to go. Those players like Winks, Harry Winks, nowhere near. He'll go to a team like an Everton. Um, for me, if the, if if we're aspiring to be champions of of um, of the Premier League, we need to have a team that's able to do that and the consistency as well. If they're not consistent, if they're not good enough, then whether we've got like that attachment, emotional attachment to them or not, they need to yeah, need to go to another team, unfortunately. Rob Ross on screen here. Um, Kane's been carrying us for too long. Enough is enough. Um, that's exactly why I'm so excited about Richarlison coming in because there'll be lots yeah. of rotation uh, between that front three. Um, Brian, um, the question did come up earlier about um, your thoughts on Gareth Bow. Of course, you're uh, chairman of the LA Spurs uh, supporters group. Um, no doubt you'll be going to see him uh, quite often, will you? No, <coughs> no, I won't, actually. <laughs> quite funny. Um <laughs> I've been I've been in LA for 32 years. So um, to me, the best players I've ever seen in a Spurs shirt has been Glenn Hoddle and Gareth Bale because because of the TV in the 80s, I couldn't see uh, Gascon and I was obviously living here. So I only saw him once or twice at White Hart Lane. So I can't compare Gascon to those two. But Bale is him and Hoddle, the two best Spurs players I've ever seen. Complete game changers. And since 96, I've been an LA Galaxy fan. Not really like a massive fan, but um, maybe a sort of an armchair fan that have been to see him about 20 or 30 times. But when um, LAFC came to LA, was it two or three years ago? Um, I went to see him about two or three times and just couldn't get into it. So if he'd have come to the Galaxy, I'd be more excited. In fact, I'd be more excited if he'd have come to Tottenham. Um, but... Uh, no, I just and we're divided in LA too. We have a lot of banter back and forth in our messenger group about um, him coming. But I'm, I might go and see him once. But 
I'm very disappointed, to be honest with you. It's going to upset a lot of LA, Spur, LA uh, FC fans, but just not really. Um, it's not really the move I wanted to see, and, and quite shocking and surprising as well. I thought, you know, you, I woke up here and thought, what? That's, I thought he was on his way to Cardiff. So I think there's a lot of upset Cardiff fans. And uh, by the way, I've been coughing a lot. I've just been getting over COVID recently, so I feel like I've got COVID brain that kicks in and out. So I apologise oh. for that. Ricky, Roy oh, writes on the mate. screen here. Chris, when you end the videos, we ask your guests where you can find them. Leave Ricky out so he, he won't have a clue. Um, Rick, you must, be, you must be absolutely delighted that Watford got relegated. <laughs> um, do you know what? I don't know what it is. My, I, I just, it just keeps cutting in and out. I, did, I didn't even get to see that message because I was so kind of in, in, entranced with Brian's story there about LA Galaxy and LAFC <laughs> that I totally missed it, mate. I just... I don't know what well, happened. I, I don't know what's happening with my connection. I think I've got some Ramon Vega Wi-Fi this week. I don't know what's happening. Well, <laughs> let me just tell everyone. I did actually message Ricky a week or so ago and said, Rick, can you just tell everyone the Watford story? Video it. I'll put it out on the channel. So when, whenever anyone mentions it, we can just refer them to that video. But I didn't get a reply. I didn't get a reply. I thought it was very rude, Rick. <laughs> And do you know what? It cut out again. I don't even know what happened. What happened? What did you say? What happened? <laughs> well, it's been a great show. And uh, Rich, uh, Ricky and Brian, thanks so much for joining us. And uh, Rich, tell everyone where they can find you and what you're up to at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, training for London Marathon like yourself. Uh, then New York after. Uh, Get him. Got no, got no track stuff this year. No Commonwealth Games. But um, again, I'll be down the lane uh, as you know I'm the um, Spurs Ability Ambassador now so um, working on obviously an inclusive environment for everybody um, at the ground and in the team uh, which is an awesome honour and accolade so uh, thanks for everybody with that and um, yeah, just working on my foundation we had a, an event uh, last week um, yeah, 650 people turned up and it's a great, great um, start and launch event so my foundation is all about inclusion, um, whether it's, it's disability, whether it's BME, whether it's LGBTQ+. It's about the coming together of people uh, through the power sport. So uh, I'm lucky enough that I'm able to do that. And obviously from the support of you guys. And I always forget to say, everybody that's on today, make sure you like and subscribe to this man's uh uh, obviously live stream and channels uh, because he does an, a kick-ass job. Without Chris, Spurs would not be the same kind of animal for sure. Thank you, Ricky. Thank you very much. And and Ricky, what are you up to at the moment? <laughs> 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 um, you know what, bro? Um, you know, I, I've had two auditions this week. I've been auditioning like crazy in the month of June. So fingers crossed we'll see what drops. Um, and I've had two theatre auditions this week, which have been, it's been great to be out to, actually. It, it, it's the first time after COVID that I've been able to do auditions in the room and, and uh, actually look at the director in the eye instead of like filming it at home and then sending it off and stuff like that and got to talk and got to crack a couple of jokes. Today, in today's um, audition, I actually spoke about the show. So one of the, one of the guys is, is a Man United fan. You know, so, someone has to be. Um, yeah. But, you know, um, he was a Man United fan. He was chatting and I was talking about how we're doing the pod tonight and was chatting about Tottenham and Man United and Ten Hag and stuff like that. So, yeah, been, been auditioning, been keeping myself busy. Um, like I say, fingers crossed one of these dropped this, this month. And, um, yeah, bro, just been cracking on, just been cracking on. Getting ready for Panto <laughs> season, right? <laughs> Listen, Panto pays well, bro. It's if it comes in... You. If, if you come... <laughs> well, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping next year to at least try and get out to LA so I'll be able to come and check on no, Brian and, and kind of check in with the old uh, LA Spurs crew and uh, see what happens out in LA. So fingers crossed next year. Yeah, Rick, a few I... people recently have asked, um, any chance of you ever going back to EastEnders? Oh, well, I mean, technically my character's dead, technically, but you know Brown with EastEnders... Yeah, you know, with EastEnders, that doesn't really mean much. If they give me a call, I'll, I'll happily speak to them uh, and, and we can work something out. But, You're still um, in the trunk, the call, aren't you? I, this is what I was thinking. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, no. So, the, the, you know, it's, it, it's not like I can... I, a lot of people say the same to me. It's not like I can phone EastEnders and go, yo, I'm ready to come back. It's like, 
EastEnders is still a BBC job. Do you know what I mean? BBC will still have to phone you. So if they give me a call and they want to, uh, you know, they want to chat, I'm always happy to chat. Yeah, EastEnders well, was like like family to me. So you know, and also last thing as well, Chris, before you carry on, you know what? I, what subscribers are we on, Chris? What subscribers are you on? How we many, are just what's the number. We are just approaching 72,000. So uh, I was actually going to thank everybody because uh, this last month or so, the support of the channel has been absolutely incredible. So thank you so much. All right. Well, if it gets to 75, if it gets to 75,000 subs, I will record the Watford Story video. All right? <laughs> I, I've said it. I've done it. I'll record it. We'll put it out there. But 75,000 subs. As soon as it hits 75, Chris, you give me a text. And I'll make it happen, all right? For all of you at home and the audience. Make it happen, yes. <laughs> I, I was going to say, the, the opening scene of your return on EastEnders could be you getting out of the car in Watford, looking <laughs> lost. Bloody <laughs> <laughs> fantastic, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> um, Brian, thanks so much for joining us again. It's been far too long. Um, you know, last time you were on the channel must have been a couple of years ago. Um, I've actually been to Los Angeles. I've actually met Brian and uh, went out there and uh, the LA Spurs were absolutely superb. Um, Brian, tell, tell us more about the LA Spurs and, and what you guys get up to. Well, I've been uh, heading up the the board, so to speak, for about eight years. We meet up at the Greyhound Pub in LA. We sh we post a lot of our videos. I don't know if you've seen them on our on our you know social media. And uh, shout out to the Greyhound Pub. It's in Highland Park. We've been going there for I said about eight years now, and. Um, even at four o'clock in the morning when you guys are having the 12 o'clock games, we get 50, 60 people on a more of the bigger games, the more popular game, you know, Arsenal, Man City, Liverpool, whatever. We get 150, 200 people at the pub. And it's not like it's mixed with other fans. It's just all Spurs fans, which we love okay. because we don't want to invite any of the, you know, the Arsenal fans in. I don't know if you saw the video, Chris, of um, the last game against the Arsenal when we I taped up the uh, shirt on the ground. Did yeah, I did. That? Yeah. yeah. We take we taped an Arsenal or I taped an Arsenal shirt to there, sort of outside of the Greyhound pub so people could wipe their feet on it. So it came and it went over really well. That was the biggest I think that was the biggest social media hit we've ever had uh, on our on our platforms. But um yeah, LA Spurs, if anyone out there wants to just take take a look at the websites and any of you guys want to come over, you'll be uh, welcome with open arms. And um yeah, it's just a lot of expats get together and um, just we have a great time. You know, it's not quite the same as being at the ground, but it's just the next best thing. And a lot of we've had a lot of celebrities come to um, the pub over the years and and hang out. And as Chris said, we we met a few years ago. What was that 2018 when it when we went to San Diego and um, to the Legends yeah. Night with Ledley and uh, Darren Anderton? Yeah, it was a good night. Did, were you at the practice as well? We had the not the. Uh, yeah, the practice I know you were at, but the uh, kick about the five aside. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, LA Spurs made me feel very welcome. So uh, I, I always promote you guys, uh, Brian, um, and, and tell everyone if they're in LA, go and visit you because uh, yeah, very made me very welcome. So I can't thank you enough for that. Um, Thanks. Richard, Ricky, Brian, thanks so much for your time. And uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you. And uh, let's hope the next time we all speak, we've got so many more signings over the line. And we really can challenge for that Premier League title because we know what Antonio Conte is like. He has won uh, titles at his last three clubs, just saying. Um, thanks so much for joining me, everybody. And as Ricky said, if, if you don't subscribe to the channel as yet, please do hit that subscribe button. If you're listening to this on an audio platform, do hit that follow button. Uh, and leave a review if you can. And I will see you on the next one. Until then, come on, you Spurs. Mm.